What is good? Welcome to Philosopher's Corner. I'm John. What is good? The standard definition of good is something that achieves uh, a stated goal and something that's moral. That was basically the broad strokes of it. Uh, it is another one of the most fundamental questions in philosophy, especially for people concerned with morals and ethics. And we use it a lot. And it's an important understanding to have. So what is good? Well, we begin with asking the question also, is something intrinsically good? Does something just because it exists, like an object, like money, does that, is it necessarily just good or bad by itself? I don't think it is. I think that objects are amplification opportunities for the person who's in the relationship with the object in reality. So as we go around reality, you basically, in this analysis of what is good, you essentially have whatever the being is that's involved. And that being, in this analysis, its function is to be analyzed for its uh, ethical state. So whatever decisions it makes, whatever energies it puts out, we're looking at it to determine its its level of the energy coming out of it and its consequences are they coming out are they moral or immoral because when we look at a being from that perspective as it interacts with any single object in the material reality we can see that what however that particular being is how it's constituted when it comes into use and begins a relationship with an object in the material reality, the combination of the intention and the overall moral level of the energy coming from the being using the object is what is going to determine whether the object is now deemed good or bad. in the case of an inanimate object. So if a being is a good being and they have good intentions and they use money, and then we see what is going on, the equation would suggest that the money is going to be put to good use. And, and you know, contrary to that, if an immoral person or an immoral being with immoral intentions comes into access to this same money, the formula would follow that now that money is going to be used to amplify the immorality or the bad, you know, maybe even leading to evil. So the objects in the reality, even if they're designed one way or the other, you could look at an object and say, oh, that's clearly designed for good, like in a utilitarian physical manner and in some sort of unseen intent that has been put into the object. Or maybe even the object has an explicit intent, like it has a sign on it that basically says this is to do good things with. Um, that doesn't mean that the object it is going to be used to do good things. And conversely, uh, an object could be, it could be designed expressly as a weapon to do bad things. And that is no guarantee uh, that it will be used for bad things. So the objects in the reality they can be repurposed, they can be reintended or they can be used in perfect harmony with its purpose and intent.
And that's sort of the story of any object in the reality. They're items for amplification for the use of the beings engaged in life. And in this particular analysis, specifically for moral and ethical analysis, which is really, I think, there's the two levels of a lot of times when people are asking what is good. They're asking on the you know, utilitarian level, which is like pretty basic, this material level, is it good? And usually when people are asking that, they're really asking, does this thing maintain harmony with its environment? And then there's the deeper level, which starts to get into the inner level of things with intention and uh, effects on the soul and effects on unseen realms, energetic realms. And you start to say, well, what, what is good? You know, is it putting off this uh, energy that we would describe as good? Is it, is it creating more energy? Is it creating more utility? Is it creating growth? Is it catalyzing evolution? Is it creating an opportunity for completeness, wholeness, completion? Is it providing the necessary experiences in life to achieve fulfillment in harmony with other moral and ethical beings, those being really the primary nodes to be in harmony with in the physical reality. And then the emotions and the energies and the other things being the fruits of those actions and interactions being deemed as good. And then through experience and repetition and discernment, one can start to comprehend and determine for oneself the good and where the good leads and both externally and internally and in the overall context of a life itself. Because some things can be good. You know, it should be said that oftentimes in life, A person can can do a bad thing or choose to do to do a bad thing, an immoral thing, and then they learn from it, and then look back and go, and say, "Oh, that was a good thing." And what they're really saying is, it was a good learning opportunity, because it doesn't go back and make a bad thing a good thing. If a person commits a very bad crime. And then they learn from it and it propels them to be an extraordinarily good person in the long run. It doesn't excuse and it doesn't change the moral assessment of the immoral crime that they committed. But they can rightly look back and say, well, that that immoral experience catalyzed me into being a good person. In fact, it was... That was my last, that was the last immoral experience that I needed to have to convince me to live a moral and ethical life. Which is the process of life, or so most people agree, that it's a mixture of these things until the person gets to a level of discernment. Discernment being that you can generally tell the good from the bad consciously and that it informs your approach to life it informs your approach to people and that you're somewhere aware of the potential consequences of the decisions and the actions that you're making 
And at that point, people, you know, they make choices. Some people decide that when they have achieved that discernment, that they're going to go ahead and be good. And when those people go through life, you know, you generally know who they are. They gain a reputation as being a good person because they gain a momentum of discernment of doing the good, of doing the moral thing, of going towards completion. And other people, astoundingly enough, get to that level of discernment and decide that they enjoy doing bad things and that they enjoy being immoral. And they find that there's, generally speaking, they find that there's advantages in the material world that override their need to do the good. And they feel like there's personal advantages to doing the bad. And they create a set of ethics that strategize doing the bad because they feel that there are many personal advantages to it. And they end up becoming bad people. And when they do it consciously long enough, they become evil people. And they strategize around their perceived advantages of acting immorally. And once they go down that path, then there's all sorts of other rationalizations and justifications they make. And oftentimes they decide that they tell themselves that they're actually more intelligent than good people acting morally because they're self-justifying their bad behavior and they're only accounting for the very self-centered advantages that they're gaining by being immoral and they have forgotten and blacked out all of the utility and all of the good things that come from making good and moral choices So really, I guess this discussion is is what is good and what is bad. They're kind of two sides of the same coin. I guess I'll put that in the beginning of the video. What is good and what is bad. So yeah, you have ethical, you have beings that are in the reality that from the looks of it, are here to engage in activity which catalyzes their discernment of choices that are up to them to determine, to figure out their own internal process to discern what is good and bad. And there's the physical utility side of good and bad, and then there's the deeper inner realms, the energetic realms and leading to the spiritual realms, to the soul of good and bad. And philosophically, from the looks of it, no one can escape these decisions. Life itself seems to be an inculcation in the discernment between good and bad you know, leading into the deeper realms of good and evil. Good being people who make moral choices and constructed sets of ethics based on moral choices and discernments and bad slash evil people and beings being those who can also discern good from bad, but consciously choose to do the bad or immoral things and then create in an associated set of ethics that are based on doing bad and immoral things, usually for personal advantage, but as with anything in life, I'm sure there's infinite other reasons why a person would create a set of ethics based on bad or immoral discernment. And that's sort of the bifurcation in the moral slash ethical realm. Well, I hope you found this helpful. Uh, 
Thanks for spending some time here at Philosopher's Corner. Of course, I'd implore you to do the good. It's worth it. And have fun.